So we are still talking about core networking infrastructure. And in this section of the course, we're going to talk about name resolution. These are public and private DNS zones that you can create inside Azure that can be the authoritative response for domain names. Now, this does not mean that you can register domain names that are unregistered in Azure, but you can use Azure to be the default responder for requests to those domain names. So let's go back into the portal and we're going to say create a resource and we're going to look for DNS zone. Now there are public and private DNS zones. A public DNS zone can serve on the public internet to respond to requests for a domain. Private DNS zone, as the name implies, would be something that is internal to your solution, into your subscription, and is not accessible from the public internet. So let's say you have various solutions that have private IP addresses. You could give domain names to those private IP addresses and make it easier to remember and maybe easier to make changes and things like that. So let's create a public DNS zone. I'm going to choose DNS zone and choose create. I'm going to put this DNS zone into my AZ 700 group that I've been playing with. Now you'll see here that the purpose of this public DNS zone, as I said, was to resolve what a written domain name is in terms of its IP address. It is basically the directory lookup for different domain names and subdomains. There's not much to creating one. I just picked the resource group and I do have to give it a name. So I can call it getCloudSkills.xyz and that will basically register this as the authoritative name server for this domain name. So this is a domain name that I am claiming. Now you might think, oh, you can just claim a domain. I could put google.com or microsoft.com in there. Well, you could, but it actually hasn't changed anything yet. The internet doesn't just automatically respond when you register a new DNS zone. It's not like traffic suddenly gets redirected. For this domain, which is getcloudskills.xyz, I would have to go to my domain registrar and then indicate these name servers as being the authoritative name servers for this domain. So let's have a look at how to connect this DNS zone to a domain name in a domain name registrar. And then on the other side, how to, to connect a host name to something like a web server. We'll do that in the next video. So I've actually gone and purchased this domain, getcloudskills.xyz. It's only a dollar, so can't be too mad about that. And what I've done, I use Namecheap as my registrar. So I purchased this domain. And what I want to do is I want to modify these DNS servers and add these four DNS servers to there. So I go into custom DNS. I could just copy this and paste it. Now you'll notice this is a pretty redundant setup because not only does modern DNS servers, they use multiple of them, but they also use different top level domains. So this is spread out among com, net, org, and info. And so again, that is, I would say maximum redundancy there in case one of those top level domains was to go down. So we get into name servers one, two, three, and four, the final one being info. Now you really only need two, but four again is a maximum safety and redundancy. So now when I click save, then when someone goes and requests getcloudskills.xyz, they're going to first check that the authoritative responders for this domain are these four servers. These four servers are run and controlled by Microsoft Azure and then we're going to have to start adding in zones and um, host names essentially here in order to get things to be responded to. So even if I click this checkbox here, this is going to update the record. Again, you can see it says it takes up to 48 hours. So obviously it depends on your the propagation of this. There's a couple of times a day that this gets propagated. I literally just purchased this domain, so I don't think it's been propagated anywhere yet. It probably hasn't even left Namecheap, to be honest. 
So now I've basically set up getcloudskills.xyz in the registrar to when anyone asks for www.getcloudskills.xyz, they'll be sent to Azure. Now, right now, there are no host names for www, so there's no authoritative response. It wouldn't work. What we need to do is then set up a web server and then we can enter the www host name to send traffic to that web server. Now, it just so happens that I have a virtual machine from a previous section when we're talking about subnets that it currently is stopped. I am in the process of starting it, but it does have a public IP address and it is configured to allow port 80 and 443 traffic. All I need to do is create a web server there. So I'll do that really quick. And then we can associate www.getcloudskills.xyz to this virtual machine at this IP address. So I'm going to let that start up. It's a relatively small VM with one CPU and only 3.5 gigabytes of memory. So it takes a minute to start. As soon as that starts, I'm going to log into the machine, load up IIS, and I'm going to pause the video and come back when that's done. Now, for those curious, adding a web server to a virtual machine in Azure or Windows virtual machine is relatively straightforward. Really, all you need to do is say add roles and features and then get the IIS role started. So we'll wait for that to start in a second. So add roles and features. This isn't necessary for the exam, obviously, but uh, we want to add a web server. We don't really care about the features of the web server because we're just going to use the default. We're not installing any web programs, really. We're just going to use the default IIS website as our test. All right, so first we can test this on localhost. I'm never a fan of Internet Explorer because it's always going to give you lots of errors. But I can type localhost. And we can see that we have a working web server on localhost. So now I can disconnect here. Now the next test is that we can connect to this by its IP address. So I copy the IP address, go into a new web browser and enter the IP address and we get the same you know, default website. So we know that this is accessible by its IP address. What we're going to want is www.getcloudskills.xyz. We don't have that. We haven't set that up yet. So let's go into the home again. We're going to go into the DNS zone and we're going to add a couple of records. First we're adding is an A record. An A record points to IPv4 address. And we have the IP address and so that's 1373 in this particular case 3817. And the time to live value is basically how long this gets cached in local I don't want this to be cached more than five minutes because we're doing a demo right now. This at sign is going to represent the default no host. So if you just enter getcloudskills.xyz with nothing in the front, you're going to get this. Right, so I've got my A record. Now I'm also going to want the www record. Now one thing I can do is use a C name and what that's going to do is it's going to essentially redirect people. So I can redirect www to getcloudskills.xyz. And again, five minutes time to live seems like enough for this demo. All right, so now we have our public DNS zone registered in our registrar and we have a couple of records, a C name and, and a record that should basically serve up our web server, which is this IP address, when people are requesting the domain name, which is getcloudskills.xyz. Now do keep in mind that, again, we do have this worldwide caching concept where the domain name changes to go out, but we literally have not used this domain. So there should be no caching of this anywhere in the world. If you're going to use a real domain name, let's say this was a working website and had thousands of visitors a day, these things do take time to propagate. Now, am I brave? I don't know, but I just entered getcloudskills.xyz in my browser and it was able to resolve to our demo website. Similarly, www should invoke that C name and again, it redirects to Get Cloud Skills without the www. So far, our public DNS zone is working as expected. It is able to translate a domain name from this textual value 
into an IP address. And we are in full control of this within Microsoft Azure. Now I could do the same kind of thing in my registrar. So my particular registrar Namecheap offers DNS services. And so I could have put the A record and the C name record into Namecheap. It's quite possible. But obviously when you get your own DNS zone, then you no longer beholden to Namecheap. And you might as a organization want to be able to control these things and uh, tie it all together to your solution within Azure. Hi guys, this is Scott Duffy from getcloudskills.com and I do would love to invite you. I do have courses on all of them and the links are in the description. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below this video. Thank you so much for watching. Click the thumbs up button if you like this video. There's the subscribe button down below if you wanna see more videos like this as I create them.